Hi guys, welcome. In this video, I'm going to discuss about producer and consumer. So, producer and consumer, or dispatcher and performer, it's actually an old pattern. UiPath names this as dispatcher and performer. However, it's the same notion. So, producer and consumer, it's way before UiPath has appeared. And what's so special to this is that a business process is split in two parts, which is named producer and consumer. And in the middle, there is a messaging service. Now, in this example, because we are talking about the UiPath solution, there is a built-in messaging service, which is named Orchestrator Q. Now, there is necessary needed to link the UiPath robot with the orchestrator? Definitely no. So UiPath is just a communication method, but this pattern can be easily applied to other things. So what are the advantages for using this approach? Well, first, implementation. These processes, they can be implemented differently. And when I hear, say, I'm more related to the infrastructure settings, for instance, the producer can be attended and the consumer can be unattended. And actually, this is the typical scenario that you're going to face because producer, it's sending the messages to the messaging services and then the consumer, it grabs messaging from there. And that can easily be done in an unattended robot. Now, another advantage is this scalability because it scale as it needed. Now, in this example, I have just two producer and consumer, but actually there's no link between how many producer and how many consumers. Of course, uh, there's no advantages if you have just one producer and one consumer, uh, because you basically you have a linear process with the complexity added in the middle, like the messaging service. But however, if you're gonna design a process like this, it's more easy to scale in the future. Now, another example is the maintainability because one team can work to the producer and the other one can work at the producer. Now, this can work simultaneously as long between them there is a contract. Now, the contract I'm referring to the messages which are exchanged. Basically, the producer is sending one message with a certain format or a certain values and the consumer is expecting to receive from the other one. Now, if something doesn't happen, let's say the producer doesn't write the message properly, or the consumer doesn't read the message properly, you know where the problem is. But between these two, there is like an agreement. So something which is written. And because there is assumption between these two, this contract, you can make the testing very easily. And this seems a bit counterintuitive. And I've seen many RPA developers that they are afraid of this approach because there is another service which is called uh, the messaging queue. So in order to test this robot, you can have I know, like an integration testing. You have the producer, the consumer, and things like that. But in reality, it's not like that. It's way easier to test if you have a producer and consumer. And another advantage is the audit. And to the audit, I'm thinking to the commands, to the messages which are sent. And here, I'm going to make an assumption that the producer, it will do the reading part. So it will read, I know, the necessary PDF invoices, the email, and it will send the necessary commands in the messaging service that the consumer it will retrieve. And as you can have this approach, you are separating the reading part, which is in the producer, with the write part, which is in the consumer. And that's a big advantage for the audit because everything is tracked in the orchestrator. And when you do that, you have another advantages for replaying messages. So replaying, it means as long as you're gonna store these kind of messages in that order, you can replay the bugs, so the behaviors. And have a look to this like a huge advantage. Now, replaying and reproducing scenarios, it's actually one of the most difficult parts in the RPA because RPA, it's on top of the entire system and you don't know where there can be a glitch in what system. But replaying can help you to reproduce the scenarios like you have in the production. And to sum up, there are a bunch of advantages for implementation, for scalability, for maintainability, testability, audit, replay. Of course, all of these advantages, they come with a cost. The cost is the development cost and the experience of the developers. It's not easy to implement correctly a producer and consumer pattern. I mean, it's not about just splitting the robot, it's about the error handling, about the contracts, about testing. So all of these phases require RPA developers with a bit of experience, and that's a cost also. And let's respond to some questions which I have heard from RPA developers. Do we have a minimum amount of producer and consumers? Well, definitely no. 
but there is recommended to have at least two for scalability. Otherwise, it doesn't work to implement such a thing. And is it mandatory to use reframework? Because reframework built in, it's set to use orchestrator queues. So is it mandatory to use? And the answer is no. Even reframework is set as a default to work with the queues. Reframework, it's more about a setup. Even if framework is set by default to work with queues, reframework is for creating reliable robots. And to be honest, the reason UiPath created reframework is to have a standard in RPA developers, to have like a pattern. And to be honest, I see two big advantages that UiPath created reframework. One of them is to help us to doesn't re-implement a couple of things. And the other one, which I see way more important, is that to make a standard to make a standard in all the RP developers so everyone should be aligned, everyone should have the same expectation. And in my opinion, the second reason, it's way important than implementing the features for exception handling, for automatic let it try, and things like that. And to respond to the question, no, it's not mandatory, it's recommended, and actually it's more easy to use the framework with the producer and consumer pattern. And does it work only with UiPath app orchestrator? No and it works with any messaging service. Now, indeed, it's much easier to integrate with Orchestrator because it has support built in. But in reality, you can use any messaging service like RabbitMQ or Azure Messaging Service. However, you're gonna have some overhead to make this setup, so the prerequisite. And how the testing works? Well, easier, because you can decouple the system and you can mock the messages received. Do you remember what I said about the contracts? Well, the contract is just an agreement and it's a statement that both of the processes they start to be developed. So the producer has a contract to write the messages like they were expected and the consumer is expected to read the messages like he was expecting. And because you make this decoupling, you're gonna make the testing actually way easier. But how about the additional steps that we need to add? Well, the contracts, the messages which are exchange between dispatcher and performer, they needs to be somewhere written. Actually, that would be an extra step for the documentation. And if you're gonna use Scrum in the epic story, that's the part where we're gonna write this documentation, so these contracts. But this is more related to the architecture. So that's not a step that the developer should do it, should only respect the specification that he has received. Is this pattern really usable? And the answer is yes. I have used it in production environment where I needed to create a robot which scales for multiple countries. And usually when you have a workload that it involves multiple countries or some services which they go to a headquarters, you're gonna have this approach. Now that was for producer and consumer. Drop me a comment related to your opinion about this approach. What do you think? Have you used it in the past? Drop me a comment. I really want to hear your opinion on this. Without further ado, I'll catch you next time. Bye.